For several reasons, the pensions regulator is putting increased focus on the quality and completeness of pension scheme data. So in the uh, scheme annual return now, they're expecting pensions to score their common data accuracy. And the TPR have just this week reiterated the point that that will be common data accuracy, not just having fields filled, but uh, fields filled with correct data. So that's increasingly under their microscope. Uh, they've also, with, with regard to this, they've given guidance on internal controls and their statement is again reiterating that uh, governance, record keeping and the quality of data in schemes is the focus for three years, 2019 through to 2021. The TPR again has an expectation that a pension scheme should have a framework for evaluating data accuracy and intrinsic to that framework there should be a, an improvement plan. So the TPR are strong on this subject. Also the Financial Conduct Authority, they've got increasing questions around data completeness and accuracy for pension records and of course the GDPR have been powerful in regard to this aspect. They stipulate that data has to be maintained and that gaps in data have to be populated, but again, with the emphasis on accuracy. So at Target, we are seeing action from clients in, in regard to these matters, but, but the extent of the action is varied. Some pension schemes are looking at, at clear gaps and addressing those issues, but not testing the whole data across the book, while others seem to have a more committed approach, a more comprehensive approach across the whole book and across all of their data. And we're finding from experience that the clients who pursue that latter approach, a more comprehensive approach on an annual basis, are vocal, they're testifying to the benefits. They're saying that the costs they incur of cleaning the data are recouped through reduced admin costs. They're telling us that year on year they're seeing those costs reduce and they're seeing continuous and increasing improvements in the condition of their data quality. Automated tracing in, in principle is where uh, we run the title, name, date of birth and address of scheme members against an external data source. And the purpose of that is to confirm that the address held by the pension scheme is correct or to establish if there's a new address that the member has moved to. But the success and accuracy of an automated trace process can vary dramatically Initially, because the data supplied by the pension scheme may or may not be too good. And then the data used by the tracing company can vary in quality as well. Uh, now, not all trace companies work the same way. They don't all use the same data sources. They don't all use the same matching methods. So tracing companies can elect to use cheaper or more expensive and robust data sources and the results will vary accordingly. If a tracing company uses a cheaper per member automated trace process, the success rate initially could be very low and that would mean that the pension scheme might then be encouraged to look for the remaining members through more expensive manual processes. But on the flip side, the quality of an automated trace process can't be measured simply by an apparent high volume of successful results. Because if bad quality data is used in the exercise, it can give what I would term an artificially high success rate. So it's imperative that results, particularly new addresses, that are returned from an automated process are verified before they're used by the pension scheme. As we mentioned earlier, 
tracing companies are u unique in the way they work, uh, unique in the data sources they use and how they use them. So the data sources that are used for member tracing, again, as we said, will directly affect the success of an automated trace exercise. So if a data source is used to process scheme data and that data source doesn't contain, for instance, date of birth data, then it cannot accurately and reliably locate members. It can locate persons with the same name, but highly likely not the right person. Uh, and in doing so, that incurs a high probability that you'll end up with reportable data breaches. Those type of data sources are still quite widely used in some tracing exercises. I can give an example, there's an NCOA file, National Change of Address file, uh, which is held by the Royal Mail, 22 million historical addresses, built for a specific purpose, but not for the purpose uh, that we're talking about here, tracing. From a GDPR point of view, it's non-compliant and could get a pension scheme into a lot of trouble. So it's important that schemes ask questions of their trace providers. They need to ask them what data sources are being used. They need to ask, are the data sources being used for my tracing exercise GDPR compliant? Two simple, powerful questions that will help a scheme to stay compliant and encourage accuracy. Now, the risk of non-compliant data sources is very real. Quite recent history, the Cambridge Analytica case, that's a powerful demonstration that there are still data sources being used today for purposes where they have no legitimate purpose. So it's a, it's a very real issue. Uh, and now, subsequent to that, with the ICO empowered to fine organizations up to 4% of their global turnover, that very real issue needs to be on the radar of any data controller working on behalf of a pension scheme. Unless a member is approaching retirement, how engaged are they with the pension scheme? How much of a priority is it for a member to update their pension schemes, say every time they move? How easy is it for a member to update their address? How much time does it take? With regard to technology, keeping them in control, lots of schemes now offer online portals, but from a target experience, many of our clients are saying that the engagement in regard to those is still quite low. While technology is still moving quite fast. For example, we've been able to bank online for some years now, and now we can do that through apps. Uh, when you think what we utilise our phones for, you know, talking and texting seems to be uh, less and less the, the function. We're, we're buying things, small and large. We're booking flights. We're ordering food, ordering taxis, booking holidays and banking through apps. That's what technology is allowing people to do. Are pensions somewhat behind the times it, it is is the question because there's proven tech now that allows a member via an app using biometrics to digitally verify their ID. It enables a member to take control of their own data to more simply and securely confirm to their pension providers, perhaps multiple pension providers, that they have the right information. It enables those members to correct or confirm or change their personal details, to correct or confirm or change their address details, to provide or alter contact information. Technology is available now that enables pension schemes to meet their own requirements, but puts the members in control of their own data.